aperture. Someone gave me this in 2001, and they said, you should do something with this. I was like, it's an ad for a 2001 Toyota RAV4, and I was like, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> it's like, this is where truth becomes better than fiction, and after four years of thinking about it, the only thing I could think to do was this. You know, and I realized that basically, you know, the last thing that you'd think this was an ad for was Japanese cars, right? And so, you know, what's going on in here? And I, and I started thinking about, like, basically someone was in the boardroom, they're like, how do we get black people to buy our cars? So, like, black people like gold teeth, and we turn our car into a gold tooth, we'll be in the money. <laughs> and someone's, you know, maybe there was, like, maybe uh, Flavor Flav was in there, it was like, that's true. Um, but then, you know, I started thinking about, like, other ads and how our mind makes sense of these things. You know, like, we see this, the, the how like the, the language in the advertising says so much so I just wanted to look at the image and so when I brought this work to my mom to see what she thought about it because I was appropriating in my art she said well Hanky that's stealing I was like well <laughs> how else can I talk about this if I don't steal and what am I stealing anyway um, and so and like so I was like okay if I'm going to steal I need to have a darn good excuse so I created this, this series called Unbranded Reflections in Black by Corporate America from 1968 to 2008, and I removed all of the advertising information to, to look at what's being sold by choosing two ads for every year. And, and in this timeline, which I thought was much more fascinating, because like with the branded series I showed you before, people would come up to me like, that's really smart, that's really great work, you know, not realizing that all of that work came out of conversations in collaborative research. Um, Whereas in ads, everyone is responsible. Like ads are a reflection of a society's hopes and dreams at any given period of time. And so no one person can be held accountable or told you know, that for an ad in a certain way. So I started the series and it goes from 1968 to 2008. This is an ad from, um, well, for um, pants. <laughs> and it said, uh, Slack Power, the anti-establishment post-grad slacks by his. You know, or, but like really think about what happens when we look at these images undressed. Um, you know, where like I look at this and automatically think pancakes and Aunt Jemima, but, and it's Joe Frazier, heavyweight boxing champion in the world, one of the few symbols of, of power of African Americans at that time. And I look at it, you know, he says, you give me to eat my flapjacks without my blue bonnet, try it. You know, so he's, it's actually for margarine. You know, but like looking at it this way, like you cannot s detach him from this history of like, the, the, the caricature nanny slave mammy slave slave uh, figure, um, but then also starting thinking about ads as signs of the time and thinking about um, how this is an ad from 1977 literally couldn't have existed in 1967, or you have a black man and a white man having lunch at the same counter, and the white man is looking longingly at the black man's dark meat, you know, because which is a, a product of the black power and black exploitation era, where this idea of a super black machismo kind of was something that became a marketable thing. But also this ad from 1987 for cigarettes where it talks about the best way to smoke a cigarette which is basically you smoke a cigarette right in front of the fan so the air, the smoke rises up and just blows right back into your face so you get that full refreshing feeling. Um, or ads as we progress, this is an ad from 1979 where we just, I think the people just happen to be black, it's not about them being black. But where racism, in fact, I think you see gender roles fall into play. Where, um, and, you know, so the women watch as the men play, and the woman on the left is, like, feeding this guy this burger. But if you look at his right hand, he's got his own burger down there. <laughs> so you can almost imagine the photographer be like, oh, you need something to do. Feed him. You know, <laughs> like, that's it. Um, but, like, in, in all of these images, I can talk about so many of them for different reasons. Um, but I, I presented them in this timeline at, at the Rebel Family Collection. And I think as I had some of the photographers whose image I used come like, that's so glad you used my image. I, I, I never wanted to work for Nike anyway. Other people being like, I'm going to sue you because you stole my image. I was like, you probably should. And then they never did. Um, and then some people were like, I don't know how to feel about it. You know, then art directors being like, yeah, that was a crazy shoot. Not even thinking about the complexities of the appropriation. And so for me, I feel like that's a really, fa I think, it's a really, I think intellectual property is problematic <laughs> yeah, because, you know, owning is problematic. I mean, if we can get away with it, I think we should <laughs> as long as we can.